Hello everyone, Changpeng and I are coming from Intel Storage Software team. We are talking about the evolution of SDK towards secure container storage service. SDK is a storage performance development kit. It provides a set of tools and libraries for writing high performance, scalable user mode storage applications. SDK vHost is one SDK provided application. As a high performance storage virtualization solution with flexibility and robustness, it's already widely deployed by lots of CSP and enterprises in their infrastructure. In this topic, we start at the consideration on VM-based secure container. From recent papers and reports of AWS or Ali Cloud, Secure container is the bedrock for their public cloud container service. So it is popular in CSP. And uh, commonly, secure container is virtual machine based, like Kata containers. Here, the evaluation work we have done is based on Kata containers. Since it is virtual machine based, can SVDK we host directly be applied to Kata containers? Let's take a look at the characteristic of secure container. The first characteristic is the high container density. Not like a traditional virtualization scenario that only tens of VM are running in a server. Secure container serve more than 1,000 of containers on a single on one single host, which means more than 1,000 of lightweight virtual machines are running on a single host. The second item is resource over provisioning. CPU and memory resource will not be planned and pre-assigned to specific virtual machines. Probably, these resources will be scheduled to different container dynamically, and they are always turned seriously since there are a lot of containers. And commonly, containers do not only focus on extremely high performance, but it also focuses on flexibility and robustness. The first problem we might with SFDK and uh, secure container is about the high container density. SFDK application uses polling mode, which is a endless while loop to pull each device, check and process their requests. For a warehouse device, SPK pulls each word queue in runs. Polling mode with this type of application framework is good and efficient for heavy workloads. But for container, their L workloads are not always so heavy. So when containers are in high density, polling to query massive word queues is not uh, efficient at all. The second problem is about uh, CPU and the memory resource over provisioning. When some CPU cores are running as TKV host, then this course will be occupied or pinned by SVDK we host all the time due to polling mode. Just like our slogan, don't interrupt me, I'm polling. For memory, due to user space device DMA operation, SVDK requires memory to be pre-allocated as a huge page memory. The memory pre-allocation and the CPU occupation required by SVDK we host are barriers to over provision also resources to container. Uh, okay, towards the secure container, can we involve SPK as applications to be interruptible? Uh, let's first look back on SPK internal. Uh, one of the primary aims of SP is to scale, scale 
linearly with the addition of hardware. To achieve this, SPTG execution unit must be independent from one another as much as possible and avoid soft locks. Uh, instead of placing uh, shared data in a global location that all threads access after acquiring a lock, SPD takes a different approach altogether. SPD will often assign that data to a single thread. Uh, when other threads want to access the, the data, they must pass a message to the own thread to perform the operation on behalf of the threads. Uh, this strategy, of course, is not uh, new. For instance, it is one of the core design principles of Ericsson Long and is the main concurrency mechanism in Go language. Uh, SPD provides several layers to construct message passing in uh, infrastructure. The most uh, fundamental libraries in SPTG, for instance, uh, don't do any message passing on their own. They depend on SPTG thread abstraction. Uh, SPTG thread abstraction provides a basic message passing framework and defines a key primitives. Uh, first, SPTG is an abstraction for a lightweight stack list. Uh, thread of execution, a low-level framework can execute an SPDK thread for a single time list by calling SPDK thread pool function. Uh, the lightweight thread is the fundamental abstraction for threading in SPDK. There are also a few additional abstraction layers on top of the SPDK thread. Uh, one is the SP polar, which is uh, an abstraction for a function that should be repeatedly called on the given thread. And the other one is the SPTG message, which is a function pointer and a context pointer uh, that can be sent from a thread to another. Uh, the library also defines two additional abstractions. Uh, one is uh, SPTG out device and uh, the other is SP out channel. Uh, in order to implement a message passing strategy, the code would descri describe some object within a uh, global state and also some pre-thread context associated with that object. Uh, this makes uh, SPD very portable to a wide variety of asynchronous uh, event-based framework. Mm, SPD provides a framework for writing a synchronous pool mode, uh, shared nothing, several applications. Uh, the framework defines several concepts, reactors, events, and the lightweight uh, thread. A reactor, the event framework spawns one system thread per call. Reactor stands for the system thread. Uh, events, reactor, connect each other with lockless queues. Events can be passed between the reactors. The lightweight thread is a representative for SPD thread, who is a stackless uh, execution unit. Lightweight uh, thread in SPD is linked in a list inside a re reactor. In this event uh, framework, a reactor running a while loop round and round pulls its event queue process incoming events. Also post the SB thread attached in it. So that is the polar are executed. Uh, this framework shows how to put the SP, uh, SPDG components together. SPDG community uses it to build their applications like we host target. Uh, it glues SPDG components in a pooling program, uh, program programming model. Uh, so here for SPV host target is applying related components in SPDK with use space and pooling uh, techniques. Uh, when run via SPDV host target, 
uh, first a when the first step is a uh, when create a web hosted device SPDK will create a specific uh, SP thread uh, inside the lightweight SPDK thread the pullers are registered to tick and process our request in virtual uh, queues as the front end uh, block device as the back end. Uh, all functions are driven by pulling execution in reactors. Now we want to evolve SDK application in interrupt mode. It should be compatible with current SDK event framework and SDK thread abstraction, which is created for effective message passing, a synchronization and run to completion characteristics used by applications inside SDK. The interrupt abstraction object now are based on EPO and Event FD on Linux platform. It is the core concept to achieve interrupt weight notify mechanism. Initially, it is one EPO instance with registered target file descriptors. Different target file descriptors represents different interrupts or event source. For example, event FD is used for internal queue notification. Socket FD is used for network data coming or out notification. Timer FD is used for periodic work. VFL event FD can be used for user space device interrupt. The most important one is cascading the EPO instance for grouped events. If we map the interrupt abstraction of EPO group, then we can get SPK reactor and SPK thread to be interruptible. When apply interrupt abstraction to reactor, the reactor itself contains one top level EPO instance and one EPO and one event FD represents for its internal event queue is registered to, to the input instance. What's more, other registered file descriptors are all sub-level EPO instance, which represents SPDK threads, who is attached to this reactor. As we just said, SPDK thread itself also contains one EPO instance as a central role. Then we can register corresponding file descriptors to the thread EPO instance instead of registering polars to SPDK thread. For example, at first, uh, message queue polar or message queue process uh, event can be replaced by one event FD for message queue. Polars with interval time can be replaced by time FD. Hardware queue polars for NVMe device or VTL device can be replaced by VFL event FD. NBD polars can be replaced by just registering its PEPFD to the EPO instance. ALOBDEL can use event FD together with LibAO. If SOC group applied the interrupt abstraction for its connections, then SCSI or NVMF polars can be triggered directly by the SOC group interrupt. After applying interrupt abstraction into reactor and the SPK thread, then one SPK application can run in such a methods to get itself running in interrupt mode. The application will do block weight on reactor EPO instance and do non-block weight on SPK thread EPO instance. Then the system threads of the reactors will only get blocked at the reactor EPO instance. If the EPO instance of reactor wakes up from its event queue, then it directly comes to the event queue and process the event. If it is waking up from one SPK thread message, then the reactor 
will come to the specific SPK thread, and then the thread will process the message queue. If there is one LibARO IO completion, then the reactor, for instance, will wake up and come to that specific SPK thread, and then the thread will come to process the LibARO event. Each time the process is completed after waking up, the system thread will come back to reactor and block on reactor EPO instance. SPDK further provides a full block stack as a user space library that performs many of the same operations as a block stack in an operating system kernel. All of them are designed around message passing instead of locking, and most of the SPK libraries make several assumptions like message passing, event, co-routing, or lightweight threading framework. So if the underlying threading model is interruptible, then many of the libraries inside the SPK can run directly in, the, in interrupt mode. For example, the basic beta modules like read BDAO, speak BDAO, GPT, or malloc BDAO. For SPK, blob store, and its up layer logic volume, they can all run directly in interrupt mode without any modification. For SPK, blob FIs, and its fuse module, they can also run directly in interrupt mode without any modification. So here we have prepared a minimal set of interruptible warehouse target in interrupt mode for secure container evaluation based on some interrupt mode patches. It will use Linux ALB DAO as the storage backend. It will export Linux NBD server to host and it will provide, provide a warehouse block device to the lightweight virtual machine of secure container. A flexible block stack with logical volume are there for advanced block operations. Users can also manage this evaluation application still by SPK RPC methods. The difference of this application with the general SPK application is that it won't be pulling or occupying CPU cores anymore. When there is no workload, its CPU percentage is lower than 1%. Is lower than 1%. A set of tools are provided by SPK. Some of them are also easy to run in interrupt mode. For example, the BDAO Perf tool. It is a benchmark tool of SPK block device for thread and event work cost. A set of tools are provided by SPK. Some of them are also easy to run in interrupt mode. For example, for BDL Perf tool, it is a benchmark, it is a performance A set of tools are provided by SPDK. Some of them are also easy to run in interrupt mode. For example, for BDL Perf tool, it is a performance benchmark tool of SPDK block devices for thread and event framework cost. We have added a parameter to BDL Perf to set interrupt mode flag. With this simple mod uh, modification, we got some brief performance evaluation on interrupt mode for you to have a preview. Of course, there is a obvious performance drawdown when run BDAO perf on memory BDAO. It shows about uh, the throughput of interrupt mode is less than one third of the throughput of the polling mode. When run BDAO perf on NVMe based AL BDAO, it shows about uh, the throughput of interrupt mode is uh, around 
5 to 8 percent worse than poly mode. This is not good for extremely high performance situation, but for the container scenario, it would be enough. Okay, the last part on top of interruptible, interruptible SD application, we can um, provide a secure container storage service. Uh, at start, the most straightforward step is to providing device volume uh, from SPDKV host by docker command. Uh, provide a volume service to Kata containers via the interruptible SPV host target. And uh, SP logic volume can do same provisioning and a snapshot like a, a logical uh, volume and a device member. Uh, SP logic volume provides basic fun functionalities to meet a container uh, rootFS. Uh, provide rootFS service to Kata containers via the interruptible SPV host target and the container D. Uh, how users run SPDK is much more diverse than we expect. From SP GitHub issue and the Slack channel, we realized that there are users who run SP inside the Docker container. When containering an SP application, there are no SPDK specific changes needed. However, General SP application always requires dedicated CPU cores and huge memories. So, exclusive resource occupation is a main issue for containering an SPDK application. Uh, if SP application inside the container is running in the interrupt mode, also with non huge memory, the container uh, density will not be in packed by SPDK container. Um, currently, only basic uh, interrupt mode is supported. If we want to get SPD to be more suitable to uh, secure container scenarios from container in, in infrastructure to container instance. Um, so let's give a summary first. The pooling uh, pinned CPU and huge memory pre location can be avoided from non performance situation. With the interrupt mode, SPDV host will be a good choice to provide a storage service to secure containers. Uh, and uh, w for the future in, uh, involution, we may add interrupt support on USB's hardware block device backend, such as the NVMe driver and the block layer, without device driver and the block, uh, block device layer. And also, we can add interrupt support on modules related with the network uh, protocols, such as NVMe or Fabrics and the iSCSI. Also, we can run the mode switch between the pulling and interrupt. Uh, the last is we can official uh, non-huge memory support for all the non-DMA SP application. Uh, that's all for today's presentation. Thank you.